أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون صدق الله صدق الله المرأة العظيم My dear brethren My dear brothers and sisters This comes like an anti-climax to what we have been hearing The voice from heaven We hear Allah's kalam so beautifully read And now comes along somebody like me wanting to speak and give some comments on some Quranic verses. To me, I feel, you feel ashamed to stand up after what you have been just hearing from Allah's kalam. But it's the love and feeling that you have for me, that you want to hear me talk as a brother Muslim, so I'm forced to say some words. It was towards his last days on earth. Our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was in Medina. The whole of Arabia was at his feet. The whole of Arabia had accepted Islam. The only thing that was left to be done was now polishing up the Muslims, making them better Muslims. That he could sit back and relax. The job is done. Not so. This, this is what he must have felt, well-deserved rest. Leave it to the Sahabas to carry on polishing up the people, make them better Muslims. Not so. Allah Bari Ta'ala, he sends Akhi Jibreel with this ayah I read to you just now, telling him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا that we have not sent you a Muhammad except as a giver of glad tidings Bashirun, Wanazirun and as a warner but the bulk of mankind they still do not know there is no time for rest as the Urdu poet says وقت فرصت ہے کہاں کام ابھی باقی ہے نور توحید کا اتمام ابھی باقی ہے there is no time for rest and relaxation there is work to be done so what does he do he calls the scribes people who could read and write because our نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم was an ummi an unlettered prophet so he calls the scribes and he dictates to them five letters one to the Emperor of Persia, to the Emperor at Constantinople, the King of Egypt, the King of Yemen, and the Nagas of Abyssinia. Five letters on parchment, skins of animals, they were written down, short letters. Five Sahabas, invaluable lives. Five steed, horses, the Mercedes Benzes and the BMW of the time. That's what it was. And he sends them out in different directions. 1500 miles this way, a thousand miles the other way, across the Red Sea, few hundred miles behind him. This is what he did. Immediately he set in motion that the message, the message that Allah had given him was not only for the Arabs. It was to be given to the rest of mankind. But the bulk of mankind still hasn't received the message. This is what he did. What he could afford. He can ill afford the lives of five sahabas, five horses with little parchments. I am asking our brethren that if he had our petrodollars and if he had the printing presses that we have at our disposal, pressing of the button and thousands and tens of thousands of Qurans can be churned out. Would he not have flooded the world with the Quran, I ask you? If he can send out letters just with two verses of the Quran, one of these letters is collecting dust in the top copy museum in Istanbul. Our Turkish brethren outwardly have looked after that parchment very well. I have seen it. 
It's protected. But the message is collecting dust. Because that letter to Heraclius, the Emperor at Constantinople, begins with the first ayah, the first verse of the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And it continues. Generally, we can't read that letter because it is more like scratches, shorthand. The writings of 1400 years ago. We are used to nice, bold handwriting. So they have produced for us in beautiful script, side by side, a transcript in Arabic of that letter. So if you read this, you can decipher that. Then I read it with Bismillah. Then it says from Muhammad Rasulullah to Heraclius, the Emperor at Constantinople, accept Islam and be benefited. Then another ayah from the Holy Quran, Qul ya ahl al-kitab, ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum, alla na'buda illa Allah, wa la nushrika bihi shay'an, wa la yattakhiza ba'duna ba'dan arbaaban min duni Allah, fa in tawallaw, fa kulu shadu biyanna muslimoon, and he ends in it with his own words and his seal. That message is collecting dust in Istanbul. That message. What is the message? The message says, Qul, Allah tells him, and he is telling them, and through, through him, he's telling us all. Every Muslim is being told, Qul, tell them, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, Ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawa'im baynana wa baynakum. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. And the terms and conditions of getting together, Allah says, Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. This is what you want to talk about. You want to have a dialogue? What dialogue? Our brethren have been having dialogues with the Christians. One Christian missionary said it is hogwash. This dialogue taking place between Muslims and Christians is hogwash. You know what's hogwash? When you wash the pig and the leftover water, that's what it is. And wallah, that's a Christian missionary says that. And I think I have, I'm inclined to agree with him. Hogwash, bluffing the people. Dialogue, what dialogue? What dialogue are you talking about? Allah is telling you to have a dialogue with him. Then he's telling you what to talk about. Not the price of oil and the position of woman. Then all this you can talk in your spare time. You have nothing else to do, you talk. But Allah is telling us what to talk about. Number one, Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Talk about that. This is Allah says, talk about this. So he said, no, no, we worship the same God. So we God. It's a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Allah says, tell him, Wala takulu thalasa, don't say Trinity, in tahu khairan lakum. This is, stop it, it will be better for you. Inna mullahu ilahu wahid, for your Allah is one Allah, he is not three in one, he is not one in three. He is telling you what to talk about. But that letter, that message is collecting dust in Istanbul, and that message is collecting dust in our homes. Every Muslim home, I can't imagine a Muslim home without a Quran. I can't imagine it. You're Muslim and you haven't got a Quran in your house, the Mashhab at least, the Arabic Quran, you haven't got it in your home. You're a Muslim. Whether you're a Bangladeshi or a Pakistani, whatever you are, you're a Sudanese, whatever you are, we have Qurans in our homes. The Quran is there, but the message is collecting dust. This is what hurts, is the message. Nobody ever uses that. Nobody. I've been to Egypt with apologies to my, our sheikh from Egypt, please. I mean no personal hurt to anybody. I just come from Egypt. In March I was there in Egypt. They called me to a Dawa conference. You know what's Dawa? Dawa means invitation. In Urdu when you say Dawa, I say invite you for tea, Dawa. You invite you for Walima, they call it you know, wedding, wedding feast. You call it Dawa. When we say Dawa conference, it means propagation, not coming to eat for a cup of tea. Yes. Dawa, the word Dawa we use. In my language, in Gujarati, we say Dawa, Dawat. In Urdu, we say Dawa, Dawat dete hai. This Dawa conference means propagation of Islam. They want to discuss the problems in Egypt. How best 
that we can do dawa. And I was there for a week. Dawa, dawa, dawa. Really, not one word of dawa. Big bluff, big bluff. His apologies, please. <laughs> <laughs> He's my host, you see. He speaks so nice about me and I'm speaking about his country. <laughs> not one word of dawah. Wallah, not one. Husni Mubarak comes along. Handsome young man. I think he's one of the handsomest of Muslim rulers. Look, to me, he looks the handsomest. And his speech, he spoke beautiful Arabic. Although I can't understand Arabic as a language, beautiful. Wallah. <laughs> no, Husn. Hus means beauty. No. Yes, Hussein, 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 it's all come from the same root word, you know, handsome, he's a handsome young man, and he started, he said, I'm listening, you know, among so many things, so, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin naas, ta'muruna bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna nin munkar, wa tu'minuna billah, and he carried on, he didn't complete the ayah, either intentionally or pressure. You know, since he was given maybe a certain time, he must just finish his talk in a certain time. So he did, he read half the verse, ayah, and he carried on. And this is happening all the time. Not only with Husna Mubarak, with all the other Mubarak. Same. People read half an ayah, like the Christians do. The Christians do the same. They take a verse, half a verse, and they create a religion. He said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. That's all. I said, look, that is only a phrase of a whole verse. Complete the verse. He doesn't know. The Muslim, he does the same. He ends, wa tu'minuna billah. What did he say? He says, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat li nas. says, you are the best of people evolved for mankind. Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna nil munkar. Because you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong. That makes you the best of people. And you believe in Allah. That is only half the ayah. The other half, nobody reads it. Nobody expounds it. Where the solution to your problems are. He says, But if the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, if they hearken to this message, it will be better for them. In other words, it will be better for you. Minhumul mu'minuna. Among them there are good people. You believe that? I don't want to. But Allah says so. Among them, among the Jews, and among the Christians, Allah says, among them there are Mu'mins, faithful people. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. Yeah, here are your customers. The first people with whom we ought to share our deen. So, our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi sent a message with this ayah in it. In our homes, is collecting dust like it's collecting dust in the top copy museum. And there is no likelihood of it ever coming out from the dust. This is my experience in Egypt, one of the leading Muslim nations in the world. For 1400 years, Islam has been supreme in that country, 1400 years, from almost the very beginnings up to today. Except for a few years the French came there, for a few years the British came there, but overall the Muslim is overlord of Egypt for 1,400 years. Can you deny that? But where's the Dawah? The Christians are there, they're boasting there are 10 million Christians. They say there are 20 million. The Christians are boasting that there are 20 million Coptic Christians in Egypt. The Muslims say no, there are only 10 million. I say it's worse. If it's 10 million, it's worse. Because the 10 million has got you under such control. If 20 million had you, I might sympathize a little with you. But the 10 million, what they're doing to you, what they have done to you, absolutely emasculated you, castrated you like oxen, oxen. Bel, bel, banadi, sapu. I go to the Dawa conference. I am promised that visa will be waiting for me when I arrive there. Mr. Didat, you don't have anything to worry about. I said, look, I'm a South African. You know, people, they don't like me because of my passport. It's not my fault. What can I do? You have nothing to worry about. We'll have visas waiting for you. So I land in Cairo, Al Qahira. And the man from the Al Azhar, he comes and takes me from the aeroplane. Quick, quick, quick. There are people there before me in the queue. He 
leaves that queue one side and he takes me right to the front to the counter. So I'm getting VIP treatment. <laughs> and I stand there waiting. He takes my passport and my son's passport and he goes. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. The queue is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> Eventually the queue is finished but I'm still there. <laughs> I was the VIP. <laughs> then he tells me, right, you sit down Mr. Dad, you wait. I said, all right, I sit down, wait. He comes after another half an hour and says, look, here is a lady here, she will now attend to you. I said, shukran. So she goes and she comes back. She said, look, wait for half an hour. I said, I'll wait for an hour, wait for two. I have nothing else to do now. So she comes after an hour, it says, $40. I said, for what? He says, visas. I said, I'm a guest of the government. He said, $40. 20 for your son, 20 for you. So I paid her $40. I gave her, she went and paid. Now, this was an Egyptian lady, well-dressed, well-spoken, good English, but from the tongue I can make out that she is Egyptian, means Arab, you know, the Arab accent is there. So when everything is done, I'm asking her in my own funny Arabic, I say, Mais Muki, I hope I'm not murdering the language, Mais Muki, what is your name? So she gives me a name which I can't remember. You see, something I never heard in my life before. See, the human mind, you need something to, to lean on to, pigeonhole with. You can't just, something from thin air, you hear something, it can't be retained. You have to pigeonhole somewhere. There's no pigeonhole for that word, word she told me. Then I'm asking her, Anta Muslima? She says, no, I'm a Christian. So I'm telling her, I says, you know, Jesus Christ, before he parted, look, this is, means our customer. A Muslim must be looking for opportunity for delivering the message. Anybody, everybody, anytime, every time. That's our primary duty. The primary duty of the Muslim is to deliver the message. Look for an excuse. And if you are looking for an opportunity, before one can say Jack Robbins, you got it. If that is what you want to do. You want to deliver the message? In so many innocent ways you can get going. So I said, you know Jesus Christ before he parted, he said, knowing she is an Egyptian Christian woman, uh, I quoted her from the Arabic Bible, which I had taken a little trouble to learn. Said, I didn't translate it for her, because she understood what I said. She was an Egyptian Christian lady, she understood. But for the benefit of my brethren who don't know Arabic, what I said was from the Gospel of St. John in the Christian Bible, chapter 16, verse 7, where it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. It is expedient for you, it is better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. That is what I told her in Arabic. So I'm asking her, who is this Muazzi? She says, I don't know. So I said, you see, in the Holy Quran we are told that before he parted, Jesus, before he parted, he said, Wa mubashiram bi rasulin ya'ti min ba'dismuhu Ahmad. And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. And Muhammad is Muazzi. She says, funny, these Egyptians, meaning the Muslims, the Muslim Egyptians, he said, these Egyptians, they take us to the dance, they take us to the cinema, but nobody tells us about Muazzi. <laughs> Look, before I can get out of the airport, she gives me a sledgehammer to beat my brethren. So, as soon as I meet them, the elite, the elite, the educated class, in the hotels, five-star hotel. I said, Akhi, look, I just met a lady, Egyptian lady, and this is what she told me. Is it true? So he said, yes. I meet another guy. I said, look, an Egyptian lady told me this at the airport. Is it true? He said, yes. You take them to the cinema, you take them to the dance, but you don't tell them anything about Deen. Amazing. 1,400 years, you have not made even a scratch on the Christian community. Not even a scratch. We Muslims are there from then. And the children and the children's children, we are there. That was Muslim, what you are, 40 million, what 40 million? This 40 million are there, the children of the old Muslims that are there, your procreation, procreation, you know. That's what you are, 40 million, if you are 40 million. 
the 10 million are the children of those that were there. For 1,400 years, they have been immune to any change. You have not been able to make even a scratch. Why? So I'm asking, I'm asking my Egyptian brethren in Egypt. I said, Ya Akhi, you read the Quran? He said, yes. In Arabic? He said, yes. You understand? He said, of course. He understands the Quran in Arabic. Yes, he understands. Unlike my people, we non-Arabs, we read for sawab, blessings. You know that? And I believe we will get the blessings. You know what we go through in Ramadan, Taravi? Hmm? The longest prayer of the day, Isha. Then after that, followed by two Nafilu Sunnah. Then we do 20 Taravi. Then we do three Witar. And then we do two again Nafil. <laughs> Can you imagine? What an ordeal we are going through. More especially the non-Arab. He doesn't underst understand one word. You know that? Even if it's half the Quran, he's Qari in my country. Poor man, he doesn't understand a word, but he is going through the ordeal. And everybody, very disciplined. You know, is the non-Muslim sees a fantastic people. These are angels all. No nation on earth can go through that discipline. No nation on earth, except the Muslim. But the poor man, not one word. If that fellow only knew that these guys, you know, 100% of them, they're going up and down, up and down, up and down, and they don't understand one word. You <laughs> see, it's a great miracle still. Can you imagine this miracle? 100% of the people, they go through the whole month of Ramadan, we, we I, me, including myself, we go through the ordeal and don't understand one word. That's the position. But you Egyptians, I said, you understand? He said, yes. I said, Allah is telling you in your language. More directly addressed to you, addressed to all, but more directly to you because you understand the message. He says, Ya Halal Kitab, O people of the book, La Taghlu Fi Deenikum. Say, do not go to extremes in your religion. Ya Halal Kitab, O Jews and Christians, do not go to extremes in your religion. Wala Taqulu Allah Illa Al Haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Inna mal Masih, most certainly the Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, Rasulullah is a messenger of Allah, wa kalimatuhu, and a word proceeding from him, al-qaha ila Maryamu wa ruhum minhu, which he bestowed upon Mary, and a word proceeding from him. Fa'aminu billahi wa rasulihi, so believe in Allah and his messenger. I said, did you tell them that? You Egyptians, I said, did you tell your Christian fellow countrymen this? He said, no. So Allah says in the Holy Quran, Wala taqulu thalasa, don't say trinity, in tahu khairul lakum, this is, stop it, it'll be better for you, innam allahu ilahu wahid, for your Allah is one Allah, he is not three in one, he is not one in three, did you tell them that? He says no. So Allah says, Lakat kafar allazina qalu inna allahu wal masihu ibn maryam, anyone who says that Jesus Christ the son of Mary is God, is making kufar, it's an act of blasphemy, treason against Allah. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحِ But Christ said, Masih said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, لَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَشِبْ اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ Who is my Lord and your Lord, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever will associate anyone with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلِيَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah will make Jannah haram for them. Heaven will be forbidden for them. وَمَا وَهُ النَّارِ and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place. وَمَالِ الظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And for the wrongdoers, there'll be no one to help. I said, did you tell them that? He says, no. So Allah says, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, O people of the book, Ta'ala, come. Did you call them? He says, no. Wallah, they're telling me, no, no, no. I want to know why. What has happened to you? You read this in your own language and you know what Allah is telling you? And it's still in you, and you, you got numbers, power, everything there. And you can't even open your mouth. I want to know why. I want an explanation. That after 1,000, you have the Al-Azhar. I'm asking, do you have a course in the Al-Azhar where they teach you how to talk to the Christian, how to propagate the faith to those 10 million? He said, no. There's no such course. The awwal fard of the Muslim is to propagate the faith. And this is not a subject where they teach you, look, the Christian, how to talk to him. So they blame Sadat, the devil. They blame Husni Mubarak. I said, this guy was born yesterday, man. For 1,400 days you are there. I want to know, for what did you do for 1,400 years? What do you blame him? Sadat and Mubarak. 
For 1400 years, there was no Sadat and no Mubarak. What are you doing then? You got the University of al Azhar for 1000, the oldest university in the world. You mean to say in your university, you are not dealing with the Quran? Where Allah says, Wala taqulu salasa, don't say Trinity. So the student says, Look, we don't say Trinity. What is this? Allah wasting his time telling us, don't say Trinity, we don't say Trinity. So no, 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 there are people who say that the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost. Who are they? It's our Coptic neighbors. They say that. We may have to go and tell them. You can't talk that in al -Azhar. The Alims, they can't talk in the masjids. For 1400 years, you couldn't. I say, I tell you why. You, I say, you'll never be able to deliver the message till doomsday. I'm telling my Egyptian brothers, on their faces, I say, you can't deliver this message till doomsday. You know why? Because some basic rules you have not hearkened to, you haven't listened to basic rules, fundamental rules. <coughs> Allah is giving you open secrets. Open secrets is giving us how to do the job. He says, Waqalu, and they say, the Jews and the Christians, they say, Lan yadkhul al jannata illa man kana hudan aw nasara, that you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah. There is no heaven for you. There is no paradise for you. There is no salvation for you unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. That's what they told the early Muslims. The Jew has fallen out of the race. He will be satisfied if you only recognize his right to our brother's land. The land that you have usurped, if you say, look man, you can have it, he'll be happy with you, no problem. Because our battle is not a religious battle. We are not fighting the Jew because he's a Jew. Yahudi, kill him because he's a Yahudi. No, no. Battle is not racial, or he's a Jew, racially. Mm. For a thousand years they lived in our midst, no problem. There had not been a single riot against the Jews in any Muslim land for a thousand years. The problem started in 1918 with the Balfour Declaration and more on and on increased. But prior to that, peace, peace between the Muslims and the Jews for all times. An individual Muslim could have killed an individual Jew and a Jew could have killed a Muslim. But racially, as a people, the Jews didn't say kill the Muslims and the Muslims didn't say kill the Jews. The problem is Palestine. If you give them the rights to take our brother's land, they will be happy with you. They don't want to convert anybody. They have made the religion a racial religion. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. And if you fall in love with a Jewish girl, and if she is particular and you can't do without her, so she'll take you to the rabbi, go through a process that you'll have to learn Hebrew, you'll have to learn everything about this. And if you're not circumcised, like one white man said in South Africa, at the age of 23, he says, I was painfully circumcised and converted. But he's still a third grade Jew. You'll never become one equal to him. They don't want you. They don't want us. They only want political recognition. But the Christian is knocking at our doors. All over the world is knocking at our doors. If he can't knock at our doors in Saudi Arabia, he gets by radio. He gets by literature. He's getting through. Today, nobody's immune. Nobody anywhere in the world. You can't be immune. The radio waves are getting through to you. They get through to you. Through the press. I mean, through the post, they're getting through to you. Or directly here in the UK, they knock at your doors. So far, I met only one man. He said, no, nobody knocks at his door. I said, you must be living in an ivory tower. Nobody knocks at your door. What kind of guy are you? Where are you living? They're knocking at our doors. So, say, That you Muslims will never, never enter Jannat unless you become a Jew or you become a Christian. In answer to that, Allah says, Tilka amani yuhum, that this is their wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination. In Urdu, we say, bakwas, bakwas. You know, this bleating baba, black sheep, this, this is just babbling. Don't get terrified with that. Don't be afraid of that. Pull. Tell them. Hatu burhanakum. 
produce your proof, your burhan, in kuntum sadiqeen. If you are speaking the truth, let us have a look at your burhan, your certificate that entitles you to heaven and that destines us to hell. Let's have a look. I say, I'm asking my Egyptian brethren in Egypt, did you ask them for the burhan? He says, no. There it is. Unless you ask for the burhan, you'll never be able to open your mouth. This is the secret. Allah is telling you, his burhan, ask him. Where's your proof? In other words, Allah knows that this is hocus pocus. This is all bunkum. Go to town with him, man. Get his proof. Without we asking, he's produced it. Here, I bought this from Birmingham, this Bible. This is a revised version of the Roman Catholic Bible. I paid nine pounds, 95 pence for this. Five pence less than 10 pounds. This one here. This is another Bible. I paid 45 pounds for this. 45 pounds I paid for this. Don't get tickled with this cover. This is the Bible. I paid 45 pounds for this. But they got the Bible in every 2,000 different languages. What language you want to read? Bangladeshi, Bengali, they got it. Urdu, they got it. Swahili, they got What language you want to read? Gujarati, they got Urdu, they, what language you want to read? And for our Arab brethren, they got 11 different Arabic Bibles. No excuse. You see at the back of the mind, say, look, this Arab fellow, surely he'll go to hell. He's got no excuse. What dialect? What dialect he wants? What script he wants? Palestinian? He's got it. Lahja, Lahja. Palestinian Lahja, he's got it. Syrian, he's got it. Moroccan, he's got it. Tunisian, he's got it. Egyptian and the Saudi, he's got it. What language? What dialect? What script? And they know how to catch fish. What are we doing? Nothing. Nothing. Well, nothing. Collecting dust. That message is collecting dust. I say, my dear brethren, it's about time. You took it out. Take that message out from the Quran. It was not meant for you or for me. Wala taqulu salasa. In the masjid, we hear it. At least in Ramadan, we heard it. Because the whole Quran was recited among them was Wala taqulu salasa. In the, in the Tarawi, didn't you hear? Anybody in your masjid say salasa? They say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You get Muslims coming here who believe in salasa. Is there a Muslim who believes in three in one and one in three? No. There isn't a Muslim. Is there a Muslim in the masjid who comes along and says that Jesus is God? No. Then who are you talking to? No. Allah is giving us that message. Find these people. Our Qari was reading so beautifully. So, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا and they say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. Do you say that? No. In other words, these are instructions given to us. Find the people who are blaspheming against Allah. Talk to them. Win them, win them, win them. Bring them over. Reason with them. This is the awwal far, the first duty of the Muslim. What's this? We have left that role. So we become targets. We become doormats for people. They come along and use us like doormats. They use us like punching bags. You see, when you do boxing, you do the punching bag, you know, for practice. Yes, they practice on us. They make nest in our heads. Is that the role Allah has for us? You being Muslim, we being Muslims, now this is the role Allah has in store for us. Become people's doormats and punching bags and nests to mess in our heads. Is that the role? No, he says he's given you a deen. He said, Li use a hero who Allah deen a kulli. A deen that is to master, overcome, and supersede them all. Kulli. Bulldoze them all. Kulli. Whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Judaism, every ism, Islam is destined to master them all, overcome them all, bulldoze them all. Wallahu karihal mushrikun. He said, Now my Muhammad, the mushrik might not like it. This is the destiny of his deen. Not being doormat for people. We are doormats, punching bags. They practice on us. They make monkeys out of us, eat our food, drink our tea, and call our Nabi names. You know, insult Islam, insult the Quran. And we laugh. We laugh. It's a big joke. Allah, to Allah is no joke. 
Wallah, it's not a joke to him. He says in Surah Maryam, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا And they say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. سَلَّقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا عِدَّا It's one of the most abominable assertions one can make. The worst swearing you can give Allah is this. You want to swear him? The worst swearing you can give is this. To say Allah begot a son. Because you're attributing to him an animal nature. The lower animal functions of sex. That's what you mean when he begot a son. سَلَّقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا عِدَّا فَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَتَّرْنَ مِنْهُ At it the skies are ready to burst وَتَنْشَقَّ الْأَرْضُ And the earth to split asunder وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ حَدَّ And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin أَنْ دَعَوْ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَا That they should say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. Such a horrible swearing, Allah says, that if the heavens had emotions and feelings like you, O Muslims, the heaven would have fallen down. If they had feelings like you, if they had emotions, the earth would have split ascended and the mountains would have fallen down in utter ruin. If they had feelings and emotions like you, what has happened to you? We say we love Allah more than anything else. We love Allah more than our wives and our daughters and our mothers. That's our claim. When you go home and your wife tells you or your mother tells you, you see, you know this neighbor, he was swearing me like this. You know, he called me all sorts of names. You can eat. You'll eat in peace. You sleep in peace. No. You react. You want to silence the man for good. And if you can't do it, you'll hire a gang. No man cost me a thousand pounds. Silence him for good. No. That's how much you love. We love our wives, our daughters, our sisters, our mothers. But we say we love Allah more than anything else. And they're saying that Allah has begotten a son. Allah reacts. But nothing happens to the Muslim. Nothing anywhere in the world. Nothing anywhere. I want to know what hypocrites we are. What are we? Hypocrites. You mean to say you can't get moved? If your wife tells you, your daughter tells you, your sister tells you that guy was swearing me, huh? you get upset. You want to kill. But when they swear Allah, <laughs> it's a big joke. You know that? Big joke to the Muslim all over the world. Whether you are in Pakistan, you are the same. Whether in Saudi Arabia or UAE, wherever you are, in England, you are the same. Big joke. This is our choice. We have chosen this. So, I said, the fundamental thing is that if you do not learn this technique, how to burhanakum, you can't do the job. Occasionally, we'll get brothers, Muslims. People come by, there's visitors. They say, these people are good people, man, on a Sunday, what are they doing? And weekday, anytime, in my masjid in Durban, Zohar time, a thousand people. In the middle of the day, middle of the week, a thousand people in the masjid, in the center of the town. They can't believe it. They say, don't you people have work to do? Don't you do anything for, for living? I say, yes. We work as hard as you and even harder. Because of our color, we have to work harder than the white man. But they can't understand. Fantastic people. We are a fantastic people. Wallah, we are. But occasional convert we get. The guy gets fascinated with your good way, this thing, that thing, he becomes a Muslim. But as a people as a whole, they are immunized against Islam. They will not, as a people as a whole, you have to learn now techniques of getting to his heart and mind and his mentality. He is a one book professor. He only knows about one book, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. So you have to use his book, his Burhan to talk to him, to reason with him. Unless you do that, hopeless. As a people, individually, we will get. A lady falls in love with a Muslim young man and you know, comes before the sheikh and says, man, convert her. You'll get them by the hundreds. But as a people, to talk to them as a people, you can't talk, you can't open your mouth unless you perfect yourself, you know something about his burhan. That's a secret. Now. Number one, you see, we have to arm ourselves. First is with our own holy book. We need the Quran. Every Muslim has a Quran in the house. I take it. Some Urdu speaking people, they have Urdu translation as well. The Bengali brother will have a Bengali translation as well. Some Gujarati fellow will have a Gujarati translation as well. The Arab, he says he doesn't need it. He thinks he doesn't need it. Because he understands. Like our beloved Kari. Does he need a translation? No. No, he apprehends the message direct. 
There is no better way than that. But in this environment, each and every Muslim home, you need an English translation. This environment forces you to have that. Because you for yourself may be very knowledgeable about the Quran. You understand beautifully the message in your own language, in Arabic. But that how are you going to reproduce for the other man? You need the right terminology. You understand. For you, between you and Allah, no problem whatsoever. But now as soon as you start talking to the other, he says, you know, we believe in Jesus. I say, yes. You believe in Jesus? Yes. So you know what the Quran says? He says, no. So you know a little bit. So you tell him, he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Why is Qalatil Malaikatu Ya Maryamu? So behold, the angel said, Why is Qalatil Malaikatu Ya Maryamu? So what's that? He said, you see, uh, the angels, they told uh, Mary, Mary, you see the mother of Jesus. Inna Allah astafaki wa taharaki wa astafaki ala nisail alameen. That God Almighty, you know, He likes you very much. And He selects you. And better than all other women in the world. This is what you're going to do. For yourself, you understood it beautifully. But how are you going to reproduce that message? You producing in your own broken way. You haven't got the mastery of the English language. Maybe as in you are a master of English in, in mathematics or in, in medicine or in law. But this is something different. So therefore, I say even the Arab needs a translation. So he can learn. Like a machine gun, staccato. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. He learns the meaning. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, that God Almighty has chosen thee and purified thee, chosen thee above the women of all nations. O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly, prostrate thyself and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. This is part of the tidings of the things unseen which we reveal unto thee, O Apostle, by inspiration. You have to learn it like that. For that you need it. Your children need it. It will improve your English. Better construction of sentences, new vocabulary, all this, blessings, blessings. And this Quran is available today, so cheap. Here, yeah. so cheap. This encyclopedia, 2,000 pages. I actually counted the pages, actually 1,920. Not much less than 2,000. 2,000 pages. You know how much? Five pounds. I showed you the Roman Catholic Bible, I paid 9.95. The other one is the King James Version, the old ancient version. I paid 45 pounds. Nine times the amount what I, you pay for this, I paid for that. Nine times. The other one, I paid twice the amount of what you pay for this. This 2,000 pages. An encyclopedia of Islam. Five pounds. And they're available here for you in this country. The pamphlets are given out. This pamphlet here, before you go, most probably you'll get them if there are enough there. It tells you here, read it, the most positive book in the world. The Quran, the most positive book in the world. A fountain of mercy and wisdom. A guide to the erring. And so on, beautiful. A solace to the suffering. A hope to those in despair. And free, free, free. To every school, college, university, and public library, absolutely free of charge. Every mosque and madrasa, absolutely free of charge. Look, we are offering. Whatever Nabi Karim would have done, we are trying to do. Wallah. Without those petrol dollars. We haven't got those petrol dollar pipelines connected yet. But we are able to sweat, 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 and we are giving this. Free to every school, college, university, and public library, free. Every mosque and madrasa, free. And to the general public, five pounds each. We haven't got the same big market the Christians have, but five pounds each. As if it is stolen property or insolvent, or liquidation stock. Stolen property. I said, look, what are you worried about? Brother, you get it. Take it. How we got it, what we do, you want me to explain? Don't waste my ten minutes. I'm going to waste my ten minutes. How I do it, how I manage it, don't worry about that. It's yours. Then, I quoted you a verse. 
you know where it was from? From Surah Sabah. Wama arsalnaka illa kafatal lin nasi bashiram wa naziram wa lakinna aktar an nasi la yalamun. Where do you find it in the Quran? In this encyclopedia? Where? 2,000 pages. Where are you going to find this now? I said, go and check up, man. Check up. Anybody gives you any reference, go and check up at home. Not that you distrust the speaker, but for your own benefit. If you go and check it up, if you see it with your own eyes, and if you read it again, it will become your property. Then you'll be able to share. And the more you share, the more knowledge you will get. I said, this is from Surah Sabah. Now, how do you find Surah Sabah in this book? How? Page through? 2,000 pages. Where will you find Sabah? Can anybody tell me? Hmm? Yes. Yes, this one has an index. Unlike the Arabic Quran from children, childhood I was reading, no index, no contents. You just start reading from Surah Fatiha, Alif Lam Mim and the whole Quran. We don't know, we were used to Yasin, we know where Yasin is. Because if somebody died, was dying, our fathers told us, he said, look, you read Yasin Sharif, and then the person's ruh, you know, departs in peace. So we were reading, our granny is going, our mother is dying, anybody else dying, sit down with Yasin, so we knew where Yasin was. But Saba, where are you going to find? So index. This one has a very comprehensive index. And the S, look for Saba. It'll tell you chapter 38. I'm sorry, chapter 34. 34 is easy to find because every page is numbered. Then it says verse number 28. 28 is easy to find. Go and read what Allah says. Like that, everything on your fingertips. You know, this beautiful encyclopedia, everything. What do you want to know? You want to know about marriage and the M. You want to know about divorce and the D. You want to know about heaven or hell and the H. What do you want to know? You want to know about Jesus and the J. Just open and the J. Visitors come to your house, non-Muslim, call them what you wait for them. Call them. Your neighbors, call them for a cup of tea and your bhajas and samosas, and your curry and rice. Wallah, you don't know what you can achieve with that. You don't know, it's worth, wallah, that your curry and rice can captivate and enslave people. People love our food, you know that? I'm speaking especially to the Pakistani and the Hindustani fellow. I don't know about the Arab food. It's not so, I don't know, the Lebanese cook very well, and I don't know about the Egyptians so much. But, look, generally, our food, compared to the insipid food of the Englishman, Insipid, not tasteless. Only salt and pepper, salt and pepper. You know, Allah has got some kick in it. Mm. Give it to him, man. And you see how he falls for you, Allah. Then, before he passes, he said, look, you know, have you seen the Quran? He says, no. So, have you got an English translation? He says, yes. Would you like to have a look at it? Nobody says no. This is the nature of man. He says, no. He says, yes, have a look. Open the book. The birth of Jesus, Surah Ali Imran. Where is Imran? Chapter 3. In the index, you'll find Imran is 3. I have 42, open it, read it to him in Arabic. Allah's kalam has power. It moves people to ecstasy and tears. Even non-Muslims, Allah tells us in the Quran that whenever signs are rehearsed to them, those people who are sincere among them, is the tears well up in their eyes. I have seen it again and again, non-Muslims. When Qari Abdul, Abdul Sabad Abdul Basit, he came to South Africa, he was reading at the Juma Masjid Durban, and I had come a little late, I dropped my family, and where I dropped my family, there was a French Catholic priest standing in the doorway, and there was a horn there, loudspeaker. And the Qari Abdul Samad Abdul Basi that already started reading. And I could see this man swaying in the doorway. Yes, not understanding a word. He's swaying. As if, you know, he's a trance, he's in a trance. Allah's Quran can do that. Why don't you? Do something, talk to him, read to him, explain to him. Look, you are all here, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah has sent you here for a purpose. Not to eat, drink and make merry, have a good time. We are all having a good time. Compared to our people back home, wherever you come from, whether in Egypt, or whether in Pakistan, or Bangladesh, or India, wherever you come from, you are better off here than in your own motherland. Otherwise, you wouldn't be staying here. Economically, materially, you are better off. Even if you are unemployed, they give you the dole. Look, you are yeah, well off. I know one man bluffed me when I said, in my country, I offer five rands each. 
that's actually the old, old rate, two pounds 10 each. And I said, if you can't afford it, just write and tell me why I should give you one for nothing. I'll give it to you for nothing. So some of your brothers here, they came across that advert. They write to me. He says, look, I've got half a dozen children and I'm unemployed. Please, can I have one free? Oh, I feel pity for the man, compassion for the man. I sent him one free from South Africa. Then when I came here, I discovered that the man who's got half a dozen children and a wife and unemployed, man, he's a king. <laughs> you know, he can save money. Yes, he even saves money. When I came, when I'm going around, some brothers take me around and they take me home, give me tea and biscuits and all that and time to eat, they give me food. I said, brother, what are you doing? He said, unemployed. You know, I feel the food hard to go down. <laughs> Wallah, he's unemployed. I'm, I'm cruel to him. You know, look what I'm doing to him, I'm doing injustice to him. So he said, look, Mota, big brother, don't worry. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> you got no excuse. Wallah, you got no excuse. Financially, you got no excuse. Five pounds, no excuse. So, get this book, your English will improve. Your English! It's construction of sentences for the Arab, I'm telling you, it's your English. I tell them in the Arab countries. You want to improve your English? Here. Yeah. Everything is here. Allah's kalam, you read. Sawab, 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 blessings. Construction of sentences, new vocabulary. Everything on your fingertips. <laughs> My dear brother, I'm not trying to sell you this because I might get some commission. But uh, look, Get it, get it. That address is given there. And I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity of coming and talking to you this afternoon. And if there are any questions, I know I might have said hard things, harsh things. See, this old man, he has come out that way, you see, in life. You know, I have been a, from childhood, you see, I was very weak. I was very weak. Big in bones and all that, big, tall, but I was very weak. So I had to learn boxing. I learned judo. I learned karate, I did weightlifting, I did swimming, all this, what for? You know, because I was very weak, I didn't want to make up for it. So now it creates that type of mentality. You see, once you go through all these processes, then your mentality changes. I was timid, timid, afraid of getting hurt. Now I says, no man, I think for every two you give me, I can give you one at least. So you see that mentality, so now my voice changes, my voice is like that, and my actions are like that. You don't find a 70-year-old man doing things like that and talking like this. You can't. This is because of that, all what I've been going through all my life. So you say, now this guy is getting hot under the collar. No, no, I don't get hot under the collar. This is me. What can I do? I can't squeak like a mouse. I can roar only. I'm made that way. So if I talk to you a bit loud, you know, I'm not trying to scold you or try to frighten you. This is my way. What can I do? So any questions that you have? Yes, Akhi brother. Oh, yes, yes, Sheikh. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, nothing is to thank, more than to thank our brother uh, for his enlightening lecture. Uh, I like to say some words, few words. Uh, I'm not going to apologize for Egypt, <laughs> but today I felt the weight of Egypt in the whole Muslim world. And what Muslims in the whole world are expecting Egypt to do? And it is our privilege. I can assure you, all of you, that all of you know Sheikh Sharawi. He has a program to comment and do tafsir of the Holy Quran. So many times when I was in Egypt, I heard him talking about the verses concerning uh, Jesus and his, uh, the Trinity and so on and so. And the man was, is very, very uh, effective and well versed. And he says that in the television, it is recorded and it is distributed everywhere. But it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm saying that Egypt does all what people expect us to do. We are still beginners in that field. And I can't tell you something that a, 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 a great or a big shot in that uh, big figure in the church, 
by name Ibrahim Khalil. He was astonished as the, 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 the bitterest enemy I ever have seen in Egypt against Islam. And Alhamdulillah, now he is a Muslim and preaching Islam. His name is Ibrahim Khalil, and he's still uh, uh, carrying the name. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what happened in my village. The priest, when he uh, embraced the Islam, it is true that nobody uh, preached Islam to him, but he embraced the Islam and sent it to my uncle to give witness that he became a Muslim, and he asked him, would you please I will die in such and such a date, and I will die in such and such a moment. Would you please come to take me to bury me with my Muslim people? And he said to him, look, if there is any conflict, because we have a, a good number in our village. I'm very sorry for that. We have a good number, and we didn't work, <laughs> work within them, as he says. Uh, we have a good number of Christians. And he said to him, if you find that the Muslims and the Christians will have the conflict and they will, they will start fighting, leave me for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will relieve me from any problem and leave me to Allah. So my uncle went there and it was, he started fighting. The police came, the attorney general came and there was a big fight. So at last he went to the body the, the, of that uh, priest and said to him, so and so, I did all what I can do, and I cut it out. Your will, now I am helpless. I can't do anything. As you told me, I will leave you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And asked the Muslims to, do, to scatter. What happened? They de buried him as a Christian, and after three days, they said the Muslims stole in his buyer, his body. Because he, it, is, it was not there. And they said the Muslims stole it. Anyhow, uh, now I felt the responsibility as an Egyptian. I felt the responsibility. I feel that the most of the people of the Muslim world are expecting from us to do more and more. But sometimes we are weak and sometimes I quote a verse from the Holy Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his prophet, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You will not guide the whom you like, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave guidance to whom he likes. It doesn't mean that I'm trying to excuse myself, no, but it is our responsibility and thanks to our brother who evoked us and provoked us in our minds to do more and more. Now let us start the questions. Why you don't start some kind of course for us to teach us to say just take a semester and you go for a year? Under the free outside, you will stop the course and we join you. Is that what you I will repeat it for you. I had. <laughs> we have started a course for in the international, a course for Muslims from all over the world. And the question was, well, look, lecturing is good, you know, we like it and we appreciate it, but wh what about starting a course of training people to do the job? That is, I think, more or less the question. So I'm replying to that now that we had already started with such an idea. We knew that this must be done. And we had a course starting from the 1st of March to the 30th of April. We have students from about 18 different Muslim countries. I'm not Muslim, 18 different countries. And uh, we put them through those spaces that they can go back and do a job. There's another course starting from the 1st of September in South Africa uh, two, for two months. 1st of September to the 30th of October. Any young man who feels like doing Dawa work, propagation, we give them a free air ticket from wherever you are to our country. Visa is no problem. You see, we have the government, we know how to, how to manipulate them. Uh, as bad as they are, we can get around them. Uh, here, as it's getting, first we want to, charity begins at home. We are there at home and we can, we are also, in other words, we are also learning. 
say, help these people, they have teething troubles, all that instead of coming here, and then uh, we find that, you know, making a mess of it, we rather do things at home. So we had the people there, two months, free boarding, free lodging, free air ticket, we're starting another one. And I have in mind, you see, I went to Cambridge University and that gave me some ideas. I saw the youth there at the Cambridge University, the Muslim youth, they are on fire. They want to do propagation. They want to give battle to the Christians. I said, right. Then for people like that, we're going to have a 10-day course, only 10 days. In 10 days' time, we'll give you a sledgehammer, how to crack the Jalut skull. <laughs> Inshallah, we start with Cambridge, we start with Oxford, and Inshallah, around here as well. But for the moment, we are having this two-month course in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, right. Inshallah, you make the application, you come and then you come back and teach. Yes, make the application, we will go through it. We want soldiers now. You see, people who had their days, you know, like, you know, retired gentlemen, this is now, as an ornament, you want to have this information, useless. We want the type of young man who can go and knock at people's doors. Because the Christians who are knocking at your doors are not DDs. They are not doctors of Jesus. They are not reverends. They are not bishops. They are ordinary people. See, they are worked up. We want ordinary young men who, are, who have the guts to go and knock at people's doors. That type of young men we want now. The first batch we had was all those degree, degree people. Now the degree people, now we discovered the mentality is different. They feel ashamed. They feel ashamed to go along and knock at people's doors. So now we are going for the younger generation. Who we can set them on fire. Go. We give you a sledgehammer, go and crack the Jalut skull, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> the positive step, a step is already being taken. As I said, we are conducting a course. We have conducted one already. We are conducting another one. At the present moment from tomorrow, there's another 10-day course taking place for the local students, young men, 10-day, 10-day, 10-day. We turn them out, we churn them out with a sledgehammer, arm them, go along and do the job. So we are working in that field, but the world is so vast and we need more manpower. We need people to come along, learn and come and teach. Because one man, or half a dozen men, there's a limit to what we can do. Compared to the Christians, they have millions. Hundreds of thousands. At the present moment, there are 70,000 crusaders occupied in the world today, out of whom 60% are Americans. See? They are boasting that they have perverted more Pakistanis into Christianity since independence than in the previous 150 years of British rule. They are boasting they have perverted more Bangladeshis into Christianity since independence than in the previous 150 years of British rule. They have converted more than 15 million Indonesians into Christianity. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Indonesia a Christian nation. We know what's going on. But the Muslim, he is lax, relax. We are a thousand million. In Pakistan, we are a hundred million. I said, look, what is this number? Seventy-two Christian units are working around Peshawar, among the Mujahideen and the Muhajireen. Seventy-two, as against six Muslim units. They have perverted so many Mujahideen into Christianity. The Christians are boasting. It will be another subject once I come. I'll show you what is going on in the world. But for the moment, we need the younger generation to volunteer. Come, man, come. We give you free air ticket, which you never had in your life before, a thing like that. Free air ticket, free boarding, lodging, free tuition, free videotapes, all of our tapes when you go back with all of our videotapes, all free. Go and do something, man. We want to arm our people. Uh, Modern technology is so relevant today. Why can't you learn something like how these are very good at Money, 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 yeah. Look, other people can't buy this for five pounds. <laughs> huh? And you want to need to work with satellites. Uh, <laughs> peace, 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 what does Islam say about that? I will answer this. I will answer this. Let me read it again to absorb what is, what our sister is really seeking. 
a number of Muslims object are uh, to receive money for teaching Quran. Oh, what does Islam say about it? What she is talking about is there are people that were prepared to teach free of charge without taking any returns. I think if that is what it means, well, it's a person's business. You want to teach free, you can't force the person to accept money. If the person can afford. But if you say, there are people, Muslims, who are saying that we can't give the Quran to non-Muslims. Ah, that's a different thing. There are Muslims who are objecting to us giving the Quran to non-Muslims. What do we do? Now, that's a problem, because there are Muslims, see, who will discourage you. They can't, they won't do it themselves. And when you are giving to somebody, they object, they say, you're going to go to hell for giving the Quran, because they quote the Quranic ayah, لا يمسه إلا المتحرون. So none shall touch it except those that are pure. And you know that they are not pure. Their personal hygiene, compared to ours, they are far off. What to do? What are we to do? I said, look, the example for that is those five letters our Nabi Karim sent out. Every letter began with the first verse of the Quran. Bismillah rahman rahim Right in the middle of that letter, another verse of the Quran. So, if it was haram to give to a non-Muslim, our Nabi did it. So, if Allah is going to choke me up for what I'm doing, he'll have to choke up his Nabi as well. So, I'm in good company. I have nothing to worry about. And nor have you anything to worry about. Look, this is the example of our Nabi. He could only, he could ill afford what he gave, but he gave two ayahs. I said, if he had the Quran, he would have given the whole Quran to the whole world, if he could have afforded it. Uh, there is a question, it is not relevant to the uh, lecture, but I, anyhow, I will read it. Are organ transplants allowed in Islam? This is for our sheikhs to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, one day when you have time, come and catch the sheikh, he will give you the appropriate answer. Right. Uh, I was arguing with a Christian today uh, about Islam Christianity. He said, that there is no any paradise, no and nor hell. Please comment. Uh, these are the sick people called Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> this is the sick people. What you have to do is, please get these books of mine. Whoever wrote this. Books are free, is the Bible God's word. What is his name? This will arm you to crack his skull. You don't start waiting and asking him to tell you, create problems for you. As soon as the man comes along, any Jehovah's Witness, get this book of mine, what the Bible, is the Bible God's word, open page 13, easy to remember, unlucky number for the Jehovah's Witness, page 13, show him. It's a page from his Awake magazine. Awake. They have a way of their own, the type of calligraphy that they use, the art. You show. The Jehovah's Witness, is this yours? Is this yours? And he recognized that this is his. So you know it says 50,000 errors in the Bible. So what? He said, look, it says 50,000 errors in the Bible. Is it true? He said, where did you get it? I said, look, is this yours? He said, yes. This is 50. The guy will never darken your door again. You, know? you don't have to start waiting for the fellow to come along with, you know, heaven and hell. What's the use of proving heaven and hell? And the guy says, still, but you got no salvation. The Quran is not Allah's kalam, but the Bible is. Go to the heart of the matter, the root of the matter, take away his burhan. Give battle to his burhan, show that this is all hocus pocus man, this is all man-made. Prove it to him, as we have been trying to do in the past, and there is a debate taking place. Actually, I came to prepare the way for the, this August debate. There's a debate taking place in August in Birmingham, NEC, the National Exhibition Center between this Palestinian Christian, Shorosh, and myself. We had a debate here in the Royal Albert Hall. He wants to have what is called a, in boxing a revenge bout. He wants to have his own back. And the subject is the Quran or the Bible, which is God's word. He wants to involve the Quran. So far, we have kept the Quran out of the battle, but the guy has forced us into the situation where he wants to discuss the Quran as well. Right, so we will discuss the Quran or the Bible between the two, which is Allah's Kalam. And it should be very interesting. It's on Saturday, uh, Sunday, the 7th of August. If you people, you know, book that day for, I'd like to see you all there. You know, give me at least that moral support to see my Muslim brethren. And 
uh, don't be like what we usually are, you know, we are too placid. You know, when a Muslim makes a point, we appreciate it. It's Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah. But nobody knows. So to the Christian, our case is going by default. You know, say, ah, you know, this guy is just babbling, nobody appreciates it. When the Christian makes a slightest something, that the Christians, oh, hooray, and what an hallelujah. So we don't have to do all that, but at least a, a small applause, you see, from you all will be worth a million there. So please, we'd like to see you there. Bring your Christian friends along as well, and your wives and children. Special accommodation will be reserved for the ladies. Uh, this question about usury, about riba, I think has no any relevant to ask this question. Yes. No, the choice was not. Uh, you see, what they did was somebody, I think, in Singapore, they took all my booklets and they put them together. You know, into one book form, and they give the name choice. We are giving us separately what the Bible says about Muhammad is, uh, is the Bible God's word, Christ in Islam, what was the sign of Jonah, all these are our separate, separate booklets which we give out. So these people, they put them all together into one book form, and what they have taken out, maybe it's about that uh, some portion. I had written a book on Al Quran, uh, the ultimate miracle, which, you know, we have disowned that now. This guy, Rashad Khalifa, he did thrill me the, with that the discovery. And now a sickness has gone to his head. Quite some time now, I will do the book and the videotape and all. At the moment, he's claiming that he is the new Rasulullah. Allah has sent him to the world. So the sickness has grown. So he said, now for that reason, I'm sure somebody might have taken out the pages. <laughs> Yes. Uh, there is a question relating to the same same question asking about the South African uh, regime. Is there any uh, powerful Islamic movement? Uh, whether we are propagating Islam to the people of the land. Well, we started, started in 1958 with very meager beginnings. We started with three pound five shillings. See, we were in a beggary condition. Three pound, five shilling, we opened our banking account and we started doing the work. And after 30 years or 40 years now, we have reached somewhere. But this is like one small society or body doing the work. The Muslim as a people are still not propagating. They don't want to propagate. You see, they find a very lame excuse. The Muslims, they say, look, we are not perfect. Look at us. How many of us got beards? How many of us pray five times a day? They're asking. Look at the Nasara clothes that you're wearing. Me too. He says, look, first improve yourself. To Musulman or Musulman Koro. So make the Muslims better Muslim first. So that is the hobby. And these people happen to be the richest of our community, the most influential people in our community. They are the ones who are talking like this. The Imam from the Mimbar, no Imam ever tells you to go and do Dawah propagation. No Imam. Anyway, he'll tell you, Masri Salat, Zakat, Hajj, some, all that, mashallah, they do. But nobody tells the, the, the community from this Mimbar, go and do Dawah. So these are our drawbacks. So we are trying to do the best we can under the circumstances. Inshallah, the community will wake up and we will do our job, yes. 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 Uh, the question was our brother, he quoted a verse from the where Allah says, La ikraha fiddin, 
There is no compulsion in religion. The truth stands out clear from error. Now, will it be still necessary because truth and falsehood can be seen? That is true. There is no compulsion in religion. Force, there's no force. Because when you force a person to accept an idea or to ac accept a belief, it is worthless. It's not worth anything. So Allah says there is no compulsion in religion. But we are told to go and de deliver the message. We are told, Ya Ahlul Kitab ta'alaw. Should we or shouldn't we? Allah says, call them. Allah says, tell them, La taghlu fi dilkum. Tell them, don't say salasa. So this is the, your job to do, is to deliver the message. If they don't accept, leave it to Allah. But you and I, we are duty bound to the best of our ability to deliver the message. <coughs> yes. Uh, how do you answer a question? He says that uh, uh, Muslims, uh, the time of uh, Prophet Muhammad used uh, uh, some form of force. What is the Christian delivered the religion to love, etc., etc.? You see, force. People, the Sahabas, in the time of the Nabi Kareem Sallallahu in self-defense. When you look at it, on the very face of it, that our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi had to flee for his life, Hijrah. The Sahabas had made two Hijras to Abyssinia, because of the force. In Medina, the, the Quraysh, the Mushriks didn't leave them alone. They came from Mecca, some 200 miles, to a place called Badar, where the Muslims went and defended themselves. The second battle, still near Medina, Uhad. The third one, Khandak, on the city itself. So who is going out to attack? The Muslims eventually did spread out by force of arms. They went and conquered half the world. But they didn't force the religion. You see, forcing religion is quite different from you going along and you say, now you want a freedom of speech. They went as far as Spain. They ruled Spain for 800 years. But had they used any type of force, 800 years, there would not have been a single Christian left in that country to chase them out. No Muslim army went to Indonesia. Did you know that? And the biggest Muslim country in the world today is Indonesia. Which Muslim army went there? Which Muslim army went to Malaysia? Which Muslim army went to Nigeria? No. So how did it spread? Even today now, Islam is spreading, they say, in, in, in the UK. What army? What force? What, what source are you using? Except of the intellect. So Thomas Carlyle, one of your great thinkers, Britisher, Thomas Carlyle, he wrote a book, Heroes in Hero Worship, in which he's defending our Nabi Kareem against this charge of spreading his religion at the point of the sword. He said, the sword? He said, the sword indeed. But where will you get your sword? said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. In one man's head alone, there it dwells as yet. It is one man against all men. That he take a sword and try to propagate will that will do little for him. said, first you must get your sword. What sword? With a sword can you get a sword? By force, if you had a gun, you can make force other people to join you with a gun? No. You have to win the willful cooperation. That is means the intellect. So this is a false charge, again and again, they repeat. Talking about Christianity, he said, look man, what are you talking about? Jesus Christ, when he marched him to Jerusalem, see, he doesn't know his Bible. He said, for those my enemies, who would not, that I should reign over them, bring them hither, and slay them before me. So do you know that? He said, kill them all. Those who don't want me to keep rule over them. Did Muhammad say any such thing? No. So the thing is, we have to, his Burhan. Just want you to know, you hit him hard. Yes. Uh, Muslims are divided into two groups. What was it? Uh, the, the poor people in his country, they received support from the Christians. I didn't say, uh, and they didn't uh, receive any support from the Muslims. How to solve this problem? It is not only intellectual problem, it is economical problem. Uh, the question was that the brother saying, 
that this is also, you know, people are getting converted. There are economic reasons as well. It can well be. See, because poverty can take you even to kufr. In other words, the Muslim also must help their own. But generally, generally it is not just economics. You just can't give a man, say I give you five pounds, fifty pounds and get him converted to Islam or to Christianity. No, you have to win his, his, his thinking and which the Christian has developed new, new techniques. Whatever country you come from, they have developed new techniques of getting to you, to your mind. You see, there was a time when they attacked Islam, the Holy Prophet. He has so many wives. He spread his religion at the point of the sword. He copied his book, the Quran, from the Jews and the Christians. But that didn't gather honey. Now they have developed new techniques of getting at you. See, they come to you now. They come to you now in my country and India, Pakistan. They develop new techniques. You see, Allah tells us in the Quran, find common grounds. Let us get onto a common platform. That is the beautiful message. Get onto common grounds. On a common platform. Then he tells you what to talk about. But common ground. So the Christians have learned that without reading the Quran. Because it's natural. If he wants to get at you, he must find common grounds. So he starts. He comes to the Muslim. He says, you believe in Jesus? What do you say? He said, of course. You believe in Jesus? He said, of course. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. He's satisfied. He says, you know, Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. What do you say? What do you say? Yes. Don't be afraid. <laughs> he said, yes. No, no, we accept that. No hesitation. He says, you know, Jesus was born miraculously without any male intervention. You accept that? That's what Allah tells us in the Quran. He said, yes, 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 we believe. He was born without any male intervention, without a male father. Right? But by Allah's miracle, he was. Was Muhammad so born? Was Muhammad born like that? No. no. Muhammad had a father and a mother. He said, yes. Jesus had only a mother. He said, yes. That means one degree higher for Jesus. He didn't tell you that, but he scored one point. He said, now, he says, look, this is a new technique they have learned. I'm, uh, I want you to be on guard. You think you're very clever? No, I tell you, you can fall with all your cleverness. He says, you know, Jesus is the Masih, Messiah, translated Christ. He's Masihullah. You accept that? Say, yes, yes. Was Muhammad Masihullah? No. no. He's only Rasulullah. See, yes. But you see, Isa is Rasul and Masih. Right? In the Quran? Say, yes. But your Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is only a Rasul? Say, yes. Another degree of for Jesus. He says, you know, Jesus gave life to the dead. Yes, he said, Allah. Did Muhammad give life to the dead, Bismillah? No, another degree of for Jesus. You know, where is Jesus? He's in heaven. He's coming back? He said, yes. He's alive? He said, yes. Where is your prophet Muhammad? He's buried in Medina. Perhaps his bones have rotted in the grave. So no, we believe he's Hayatul Nabi. He's a living prophet. He said, yeah, yeah. That's metaphysically. But physically, maybe his bones have rotted in the grave. He said, yes, maybe. Another point higher up for Jesus. Do you think God had a purpose in doing all this? He does for nothing. When you make kurbani around the corner, idul adha, a sheep or a goat or a cow, you look for a perfect animal without blemish, horn not broken, hair not cut, not blind, not limping, right? So if God Almighty wants to make a sacrifice, will he look for second best? You know who's second best? He's proved it. No. You see, this is new, new techniques that are evolving. And we are losing. Wallah, we are losing. In my country, for every one boy we lose to Christianity, we're losing three girls now. See, but the, the learned man, he's not worried. Like ostriches, like head in the sand. They don't want to know what's going on around them. They don't want to, they don't talk. So I said, look, we got to wake up. There are answers, they're so easy, Wallah. You know, this is like a game of chess. Allah has put you in that superior position, you win always, but get the material. Get my book, Christ in Islam, it will give you all the answers. Free! But no, you're too damn lazy. 
you're too damn lazy to get a free book, you want. And what to do with you people? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. In the deen and the law in Islam, Allah writes a thing that there is only Islam, there is no Christianity or Judaism. Moses was a Muslim and Christ. Correct. Uh, it's not a question, I think it's a contribution. Our brother read the Quranic ayah, Inna deen in the Allah Islam. So most certainly the religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. Further, That if they want a religion other than Islam, Allah says it will not be accepted from them. And they will be in the hereafter of the losers. So the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. The religion of Musa alayhi salam was Islam. Of Isa alayhi salam was Islam. The religion of all the prophets was Islam. But they have polluted it. So we have to now bring them back. So look to the original teachings, which we can do by learning this comparative religion, how we can bring them towards Islam. Uh, he says he himself is his experience, Jesus. How do you answer that? It was, it was, look, the brother is saying that when you meet these born-again Christians, it's a type of new sickness they have developed. They're born again. He says there's a new life, new root in them. They sin no more. He says, how do you answer that? When the man says, I am proof. I said, look, Alhamdulillah, we, it was difficult to deal with that type of mentality. It was difficult. Because now we know the guy is lying. But you can't say you are a liar. He says, you can't accuse a man on his face that you are lying. He says, look, I am proof, I am changed. I, do, I sin no more. He says, how can you say, no, you are not speaking the truth. Our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he says, shaitan courses through the body of man like the blood. Everybody. Shaitan is there. You can't say you are not tempted. Then you are not human. Somebody asked him, what about you? He said, me too, but my shaitan is under control. But every man is susceptible to temptation. These guys, they say, we see no more. They can't be tempted. I said, now look, now we have a record of all these born again, the leaders of the born again. Swagat said, if you get the tape, he said, I am proof. So right. You are proof of what? That the Bible is not God's word. That's what it's proof of what? He said he's changed, he's transformed. We knew, all, I mean, uh, in the meantime, what he was doing, twice a month he was going to that prostitute. <laughs> and not what normally what people go for. He was doing the most perverted things. See, which we can't, I can't, I can't tell you. When you meet me personally, I can tell you what, what was going on, but uh, we can't. Then Jim Becker, same. Marvin Gorman, same as 100% of you now we can say. The whole lot of you, you see, you are wretched liars. Because these are your gods. Your gods are there, down in the gutter. You are also there, you are lying. Now you can say, look, Jimmy Swaggart used to worship, and there are still people worshiping him. And the Gorman and the Becker. I said, the whole lot of you are the same. You are lying. Then we can still ask the man further. You don't get tempted. Before you can come to that, you don't get tempted. He says, no. You don't commit sin? No. He doesn't get tempted? No. I said, congratulations to you. You are greater than your own God. You know that? So how? He said, well, Jesus Christ, the Bible says he was tempted by the devil. And you can't be tempted. So you're greater than your own God. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, that is a question. You want me to read? Please. Why don't you speak out practically, especially to, to head of states? Or maybe set up Islamic missionaries all over the world. I feel that people like yourself can influence masses, whereas we, we, the general public, cannot influence individuals, let alone masses. Inshallah, to the best. I'm trying. I'm trying. When I went to Pakistan, I met General Zia. I spoke to him. No. I met Junejo, I spoke to him, and the people, unfortunately, the people around them are not keeping them informed. See, the head of state, what the poor fellow knows what's going on. His eyes and ears are you. 
his ministers. If you don't tell him what's going on, what can he know? When I started telling what is going on in Pakistan, I said, you know, there are 200,000 Christians in Sialkot on the border with India, a potential fifth column. 200,000. And I said, they're boasting that so many cities in Pakistan, there are more than 100,000 Christians each. I said, Karachi, more than 100,000. Lahore, more than 100,000. Multan, more than 100,000. Sialkot, somebody, when I said 100, I said, more than 200,000. So he says, he's telling his, his ministers, his assistants, he says, Pakistan, to Islam ka kila hai, this is the fortress of Islam. And he says, this is cracking. What should you? No, he meant it. He cried. He said, look, what is going on here? No, this, this is what it is. Unfortunate that the people around them are keeping them ignorant about what's going on. But when you show them what's going on, it hurts them. It hurts them. They want to do something, but we will try. We will try. Another one. Dear brother, I had a discussion with a Muslim brother, and we were t talking about the Jews and Christians being our enemies. But then at one stage, he said that every Muslim is partly Jewish due to Prophet Moses and partly Christian due to Prophet Jesus. What is your comment? <laughs> no, you see, in a way, laughingly, we can say that we are the true followers of Musa alayhi salam, we are the true followers of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, but we are not partly Jew and we are not partly Christian. Islam has come to supersede them all. Whether it be Judaism or Christianity or Buddhism, every ism. So we are not partly this or partly that, we are Muslims and we are destined to supersede them all. It's one of the most fantastic things, broadcasting, any uh, electronic you know, media, the Christian is using it. They're using it, the Koreans from Korea, they're broadcasting to Saudi Arabia. I'm telling the Saudis, I say, look, the Koreans are broadcasting to Saudi Arabia, but in the Korean language. They want to see that their people are not converted to Islam, so they're broadcasting day in and day out. The Christians are broadcasting from all over the world, you know, beaming, beaming to Muslim lands. But the Muslim somehow, I don't know what has happened to him, that you know, he is like deaf, dumb and blind. He doesn't know what's going on around him. And at times he's prepared to sell his own mother. The Muslim is prepared to sell his own mother. Uh, I can give you examples, but I don't want to because it's going to hurt some people just now. Leave it out. But the Muslim is very ready to sell his own mother even for a mess of footage. Uh, there is a question here, it's very, very strange question. It is written in Arabic. Anyhow, I will read it only to satisfy or the brother who wrote it. And it is irrelevant to our uh, session. Then I think he says, be... ma huwa ra'i Sayyid Ahmad Didad bihamil haramayn al-sharifayn al-malik Abdullah. Abdullah mawash malik. Wa huwa yaftatih al-rais kurs ma al-malik al-Britaniya. Hal haza amal islami wa hal huwa haramun aw halal argu al-bayan. Uh, he is asking that uh, he says he made a mistake and says King Abdullah uh, came to inaugurate the race course with the Queen of Britain. Is it Islamic uh, action or is it Islamic uh, way or, or is it halal or haram? Uh, these, these, these such questions is anyhow is irrelevant to our session. You can ask him privately. We're not going to ask the Sheikh. <laughs> yeah, he, wo he, wo he likes to put me in trouble, yes. I'm ready to face it anyhow. Uh, so many times. You heard me here. 
in the pulpit saying and condemning those are participating in the race, whether they are kings, their abirs. I said that publicly, and one of their uncles, he was here and came and introduced himself to me, saying, I'm so and so, the cousin of that man. I said, sorry, but I said the truth. That happened here in the mosque. So I am not afraid to, uh, to answer any question. Anyhow, someone is asking how our brother did that to raise his voice because they can't hear him <laughs> nicely. But what about the man, the man now? I am not going to say that he's an old man. He's an old in age, but his heart, his mind, his spirit is so young and uh, moving. But uh, can you imagine that he is standing now one and a half hour. I myself, I became very tired and I'm asking him to sit and <laughs> we are not going to exhaust him more, more than that. And inshallah, next time I, pay, I ask your permission to conclude the Please. meeting. Please. Uh, we, we always, we have the way to conclude our meetings always by reading Surah al -As. So repeat with us, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعص إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم